In this video, we're looking at another method for calculating these uh, seasonal adjustment factors. And this methodology is referred to as the centered moving average method. It's a little bit more involved than the simple method was, but hopefully, the, hopefully it gains us a little bit of accuracy when we're making our uh, forecast. So we've introduced moving averages before, and we saw there that one of the things in choosing a moving average that is an issue is, well, how many time periods do I, do I use to calculate that moving average? So it's not an issue here. Here, all I do is I say, well, how many time periods do I have that makes up one unit of time? Our time units here, there's a unit that's a year, and I have four time periods per year. So I'm going to use an MA4 process to calculate my averages. Now, how many of these moving averages can I create? Well, I can create until I have no more data to create from. So time period 17 or quarter 17 is the last time I have this moving average that I can calculate because it's the last time I have four points of data to calculate an average from. So this part should be back to something we know. Now, so step one, if I list it as such, step one is, is just this moving average process from earlier work. Now centering, centering is the new part. Centering says that I'm going to take these moving averages and I'm actually going to move them to a new location. So let's see, this was the moving average of the first year. I actually want to move it to the center of the first year, hence the name. But I don't have a real center this first year or any year because I have an even number of months. And so, or sorry, even number of quarters. So I, I don't really have a center, but here's what I am going to do. I'm going to start out at center at three. And what I'm going to do is calculate another average. But this is kind of strange. I'm taking an average of the averages. Now, why an average? Uh, well, because I, again, I have an even number of time periods. So this centered moving average, I'm actually going to use two time periods adjacent to each other to calculate this centered moving average. Now, what if the time, time frame had been odd? So a week, you know, maybe we got we have weekly data and it takes, it takes a week for a season to run through. Well, then I just would have moved the uh, first moving average to the center. So I wouldn't have done any averaging. I would just been direct trans, taking the first moving average and placing it over in the center. All right, well, how many of these center moving averages can I calculate? Well, again, I could only calculate up till I ran out of data. So let's look at this last one. Okay, well, that last one, there's only one actual data point in the average. So I, I can't really use that last one. Okay. All right, that's step two. Step three, I form a ratio. This ratio is fairly simple. It's the ratio of actual sales to this centered moving average. And again, I can only calculate this ratio for the data points where I actually have a centered moving average. Okay, So that's step three and we're done. Now step four is to create a table where I'm going to create these things I call seasonal indices. And it's very similar to the, uh, the simple moving average, or excuse me, the simple seasonal indices that we created earlier in that I'm just going to go and I'm going to say, give me an average within this table where I have data for the first quarter in that data. And I want to average these ratios. Notice the usage of the absolute versus relative references. So here's what this number says. If I were to look at all of the first quarters, let me see if this happened right. It's not feeling right. Okay, if I were to look at all the first quarters, oh, I'm 
sorry, I forgot the word if. I could figure out how come I was getting something I didn't expect. So there's my average if. I've gone to all the first quarters, this number, this number, this number. I've taken the average of those numbers, and that average is 0 0.6. Okay. Well, I should be able to copy this. So that this is the average across all second quarters. This is the average across all third quarters, etc. Okay. So, next step, I sum these seasonal indices. Now, the adjusted seasonal index is a little different, again. This time, I have four seasons in a cycle. So I'm actually going to multiply by the number of the number of seasons in the cycle. So four quarters. Then I'm going to multiply that by this seasonal index. And then I'm going to divide by this sum. So there we go. I now have now have my seasonal indices or seasonal adjustment numbers. The next thing I would want to do is I would want to put these numbers back in this table. Now, obviously, you could copy and paste them. I hope you don't do it. I really do. Uh, you should only, uh, you should never hard code if you can get away with it because it, it makes tables too hard to update. So let's go after it a different way. I'm going to look up. The number one in this table we just created. And when it finds the number one, I want it to go to the third column to extract the number that lives there. Now I'm going to do some copying, so I don't want this number to change, or this uh, table to change, excuse me. So I went in and make those absolute references. Okay, so there we go, quarter one. 0 0.61, that's what I wanted. Quarter 2 should be 91, or 0 0.91. Quarter 3 is 0 0.99. I should be able to copy this all the way down. So there are my seasonal adjustment factors uh, as they are going to be applied to my data. Now, of course, the next step is a big step, and that is, okay, well, how do I combine this with a forecast to forecast when I know there's these seasonal adjustments, and that will come later. Thank you.